What's up, everybody? Jermaine Andre, revealing fake martial arts, and I'm going to answer Jason's question. Jason asked if um, I recommended throwing high kicks to the head in self-defense situations. But we all know, if you know Bruce Lee, he's always said that you don't need to be able to kick above the waist in a self-defense situation. It's not really smart to throw at the head. I definitely have to agree, and if you look here, I got Bob set at a good height. And the truth of the matter is that, you know, um, Mice don't attack lions in the jungle. So usually when you're getting attacked by somebody, they're probably going to be bigger than you. So that's why I got Bob set up here where he's bigger than me. And for me to throw, you know, if I'm gonna kick this guy, and I'm gonna kick him in the head. Okay. Now that's me kicking him in the head. And of course I'm a you know retired pro professional fighter, you know, but when I threw that kick, I could feel my hamstring muscles pull, you know, I could feel my hips pull, you know, so it's not a good idea to kick above the waist. And the, the re, one of the main reasons why, here's the reason I'm giving you. Number one, you know, everything works nice in the gym. You know, I, I throw in, I throw this kick in, I hit him in the face up here in the gym. I'm standing on mats, I'm barefooted, you know, I got good traction. In a self-defense situation, what are you standing on? Ice, rocks, stairs, glass, you know? Uh, what kind of footwear do you have on? You know, all those things matter. Your, your feet are gonna be heavier because you got on shoes, maybe you got on high heels, ladies, you know, things like that. Uh, another thing is, when you kick below the waist, that's hard for somebody to block. You know, the head is easy. We're all used to, you know, a, a wasp flies at your face. Oh, you know, you got those natural reflexes of protecting the eyes. That's what we do in protecting the face area. You don't have natural reflexes of protecting below the waist. So you kick somebody in their knee with a good side kick or something like that, you know, a front push kick to the knee right there, you know, a huh, you know, uh, inverted kick to the knee. That's another good thing that can, you know, hyper extend that leg. Most people can't block down there. They won't have the time to reach down there and block. And if they do, your legs are four or five times more you know, stronger than their arms, so you're going to overpower that arm and probably just injure their arm if they try to make that block. So uh, I definitely do not recommend you know, kicking above the waist, you know, and, uh, unless you're, of course, an expert fighter. And even me as an expert fighter, the only time I kicked somebody, you know, that when there was somebody that I was kicking above the waist was because I knew I could take them out. You know, and there was just there was just no danger like that. And I just know I'm so fast, so strong. But the other thing that you don't keep, people don't keep in mind is, whenever you go to do martial arts or run or anything like that, what do you have to do first? You got to stretch out. All right. So here you are walking out, shooting. You're gonna sell. You think you can just throw this amazing kick and not, you know, pull a muscle or injure yourself? You know, like the people do in the movies. And that's where a lot of times the movies psych people out. They think because they see people doing it, and all this happened in the movie. You know, you're not thinking that guy just stretched out for an hour and a half before he even did something like that. So, to answer your question, Jason, uh, no, I would, I would not recommend kicking above the waist, you know, in a self-defense situation. Kick below the waist, go for the knee, go for the groin, definitely. You know, even go for the abs, you know, the ab area if you like to. Jermaine Andre, Villa Fake Martial Arts.